This is the village of Yusufari in Yusufari local government area of Yobe State. About 10 years ago, it was arable land, but with desert encroachment, this is what we have left of its glory. And it is an instance of what is going on presently in most states of northern Nigeria. The sand dune formation you see is due to the gradual movement and deposit of sharp sand over a period of time due to a low water retention capacity, which could be checked through afforestation. The persistent degradation of land by climatic variations and human activities has become a frequent occurrence in the African continent. Sadly, Nigeria is amongst the countries affected by its pang, triggering a migration of indigents from these localities to other buffer states, which in turn increases the pressure on global land resources, provoking a decline in food production. Most farmers resident in these desert encroached spots complain of lack of portable water the as the only source of water supply they have is the well. You can see them drinking from it as well as their cattle. In an effort to highlight dry lands of the country with the sole aim of salvaging and revealing the alarming nature of the effect of land degradation, we cover the northeast with focus on Yobe, the northwest with the searchlight beamed on Kebi, and the north central with the spotlights on the FCT. This is Yobe State. <laughs> The encroachment is very high with wind erosion, though the government has made various intervention moves, like the 10HA Acacia Senegalese plantation in Gununu community. Aimed at improving economic activities and reducing desertification. 3HA Woodlot Plantation in Nengere community to serve as firewood source for the people and the wind break against wind and erosion. So, first and foremost, uh, the government should be involved in uh, supplying seedlings to, to, to people to plant, plant, plant them all over, wherever they are. 
they can get from wherever they go. I mean, they, they do their something, they plant it all over so that it can protect the ero uh, erosion or whatever that can be. And it, it is planted all over it to stop erosion. And it gives you a, a protection generally in the place. It protects uh, plant from being destroyed by wind in most cases. So if you can plant them all over the farm, it can yield, it, it can give you a good yield that it will not fell uh, down or destroy the farm as it is uh, want, want it to be one. And secondly, uh, the planting it also has It has an uh, economical value. Because, for example, if we planted uh, seedlings like the mango, juice, um, cashew nuts, and so forth within the farm area, it can yield another income for you. In Kebi State, as well, they suffer reduced rainfall with increased encroachment of desert due to lack of vegetation, and that's why the federal government is embarking on tree planting, which you can see. Yet, much needs to be done to forestall more degradation, and this is what the village heads have to say. According to what I said, mm. that is, he's only he tell you that say the, the, the thing is in the west. Therefore, we don't have there is no 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 benefit to prevent win or to get the benefit or the the, the benefits that the, the plant bring to the person. Back in the FCT. It may be assumed that as the nation's capital, Abuja has no problems bedeviling it. But the reverse is the case. For those who know the Angwaka shoe, it may be a surprise to hear of its disappearance as rural urban migration, population increase and land degradation are some factors hampering restoration efforts. So in Kwali, specifically Dapa community, there has been massive deforestation going on with villagers selling firewood for survival, which are all activities mitigating various efforts. The drought and desertification are serious environmental problems affecting the northern part of the country. It has affected the livelihoods of about 40 million people in that zone that depends on the natural resources for survival. And the federal government has come up with so many problems to mitigate the effect of drought and desertification in the country. Desertification and land degradation has impacted negatively on the rural populace in the level frontline states. It has affected agricultural production since most of them depends on the land resources for survival. It has affected agricultural production and livelihoods of the people in the region. And uh, because of uh, drought, you see that most of the rural dwellers they, they drink from the same water source with their cattle. Incidentally, the area is housing a large proportion of the cattle in this country. And the veget there is no vegetation cover to protect the soil. The soil can no longer yield what it's supposed to yield. And this is making forage unavailable for the cattle in the region. That is why you see most of the cattle rearers moving from the region towards the south, and this has resulted to resource use conflicts all over the country. 
Having set up targets to achieve land degradation neutrality by 2030, the government observed that the government cannot do the, the project alone to actualize land degradation neutrality. And so there's need for involvement of other stakeholders, such as non-governmental organizations. So we are also working with NGOs such as Ruai, uh, NEST, and the National Nigeria Conservation Foundation. We have set up desk offices in various MDAs in the country, in all part of the 36 states of the Federation. We set up office, uh, desk offices to, with officers to monitor the, all activities that has to do with rehabilitation of degraded land in the country. Many intervention efforts have been made by government, stakeholders and non-governmental organizations alike towards the restoration and involvement in the fight against land degradation while striving to forestall desert encroachment and cushioning effect of drought on the people. An instance is the efforts by Rural Watch Africa Initiative, RUI, who have made efforts in sensitizing the locals on the impact of land degradation as well as providing livelihood opportunities to vulnerable communities. Irrespective of all these efforts at preserving the land from degradation and desertification, a lot still needs to be done. Our land begs for attention, the inhabitants bitten by the socio-economic impact of droughts and desertification crave succor. Given that the various interventions made so far are yet to dent the bulk of the problem. Therefore, as the world marks the desertification and drought day on June 17th, there is need for collaborative efforts and commitments from both government and private initiatives to thoroughly address the issue as negligence will affect each and everyone in the country directly or indirectly in the long run.